Hey guys, how are you today? Alrighty, it is the 16th of November. It's a Wednesday. I did a live broadcast earlier where I painted this particular painting and lost the footage. I don't know if it was YouTube or me. I don't know. Um, anyway, so we're going to replicate this again and we're going to do a real-time tutorial. I'm not going to fast forward, so this might be a long video, so fair warning. There you go. All right, so this is the completed journal. There is a flip for this. It's on my channel, look for it. And you can see all of the watercolor work that's in here. I'm going to get out the original inspiration photo, which is here. This is a fluid cold press watercolor block. So by block, I mean that it is glued, all the pages are glued together on at least two sides so that when you watercolor with it, the paper really can't warp and bend and do strange things. It stays nice and flat. So the first thing I need to do is get clean water. Oh my gosh. So here's my water from earlier. <laughs> so let me go do that and I'll be right back. Okay. So this is how I started the other page is I started with a pencil sketch. Now this is a Staedtler pencil. This is an HB so it's a kind of a hard lead and I just did a quick uh, pencil sketch of you know the basic shapes in the inspiration photo and I didn't even um, and haven't every time I've done this taken the whole photo. I'm really only doing like this part of the photo. Every time I do it, I think, oh, I'll do the whole thing. I never do the whole thing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that is, but I just, yeah, I just don't. And so just, you don't have to, you know, sketch every detail. We're going to do something... Um, loose and suggestive and that's what yeah that's all we're gonna do and you know just use a light touch of your pencil you don't need to draw dark we just want to get the suggestion in there. Okay, so we'll have something like that. Then, and can you see that? Like that. All right, now the inspiration photo and a number of others you can get in my Facebook group in the photo albums. And if you um, join, the link is, want to join if you're not a member already, the link is in the description below. Okay, so now we're going to take, this is a Pilot Varsity disposable fountain pen. It is not waterproof, not waterproof. And I want to use that to my advantage. So I'm going to use it to sketch on some of the hard um, man-made architectural shapes like the sort of um, bridge here that's going over the water. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is a scene from Scotland, from a lock in Scotland. And I'm not going to sketch in a ton of details, but I am going to sketch in a few. You want to do kind of just enough to suggest what it is. Okay, just, just like that. I'm not going to do any more than that. Then I am going to take a my round rosemary and company uh, round it's not round, triangular Rosemary and Company paintbrush, my watercolor brush, and I'm going to take just water, there's no paint on here, and just the tip of it, and using the photo as a guide, I'm going to put the water in the areas that I want the ink to bleed into to help me start to suggest the shadows. 
in the painting and to you know blur and smudge some of the lines Pro not all of them just some I've done whole um, paintings with just this Pilot Varsity pen and when it bleeds it's sort of a blue-gray it's a really interesting color okay that's looking pretty good already right all right, so now, just like I start every other painting, I'm going to do the sky. So um, earlier today when I did this, I used a combination of manganese blue and cobalt blue. And at this point, my palette is really di dirty. So we're going to get out a plate here that I can mix on. <coughs> now, this is a mixed... Um, I'm having some trouble coughing. This is a mixed palette with Quar, Winsor Newton, um, Grumbacher, Sennelier. There's one Schmink color in here, a yellow, um, uh, that I got as a sample. So I'm going to put some of the manganese blue, and then I'm going to take a little bit of the cobalt blue and mix that into the manganese and get this interesting color. And we're going to use that on the sky. Now, in an ideal world, you want to leave white paper where the clouds are and not put paint there to suggest your clouds. Sometimes I get too carried away and that doesn't happen, and that's fine. You can always go back in with some white acrylic paint or a white gel pen if you need to. So that's pretty good. Already I like it. Alrighty. Now the mountains in the background are grayer. I rearrange everything so I can reach. They're grayer and lighter than the ones in the foreground. So we are going to go in with some um, neutral. I used neutral tint in the original original piece that I did earlier today. So let's do that again. Now this neutral tint is a Windsor Newton check mark is Windsor Newton. Yeah, Windsor Newton paint is very, very well pigmented. So I'm going to add a bunch of water to it and get kind of a thin, washy um, color, a light color. It's how you get your lighter shades of certain colors of paint is by just adding water. I'm going to use that watery version of this color to start suggesting the shadows. Um, it, where the water is. And I will say I enjoy painting with you guys live. It's so much easier to do this when I'm doing it on camera, like right now, because if I make a mistake, I can just stop the t camera. <laughs> so much easier. All right. So that's pretty good. Um, now I'm going to take some of this dark. This blue here is darker blue. This is Phthalo blue, some neutral tint. I think there's some cobalt blue in here. Um, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to um, add a little bit of the neutral tint to it and get kind of a, a grayish blue. And we're going to use this grayish blue here on this mountain that's closer. And I'm going to then put a little oops, bit of the pigment and then I'm going to add some water. And I'm adding the water in the direction I want the paint to flow. So I don't necessarily want it to go up, I want it to go down. So I'm going to try to keep control of where it goes by controlling where the water is. We're using the photo for inspiration. We're not looking to copy it exactly. We're using it for artistic inspiration. If you want an exact copy, hang up the picture. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, so whatever goes above the water should be reflected in the water. So we're going to add a little bit of this down here. And I have to say, I think I like the way this one's turning out better than the one I did earlier. <laughs> I don't know what that says. So again, my neutral tint got contaminated with the blue over here, which is fine. I'm going to take some and put it over here. And then again, I'm going to add a bunch of water to it. So we get a lighter version of it. And I'm going to use it to, there's some stones here in front of the bridge. And then take some of the darker. And I'm barely touching the brush to the painting. Barely, barely. And you notice I'm leaving some white paper so that the colors kind of stay where I put them and don't bleed into each other. a little bit wet so it's blooming upwards which I don't want so we're gonna tap that we're gonna lift that top it back with the rag and we're gonna just let that dry for a little bit we'll work on something else so I'm gonna take some green and I think I'm gonna start out with hookers green and um, we are gonna start putting in some green greenness some green green suggestions Using, of course, the photo as inspiration. Add some pigment, then get the water brush wet, and then you saw me um, blot the brush off on my rag, so it's not drippy. It's wet, but it's not drippy wet. Okay, then I'm going to go in with sap green, which is um, whoops, that's not sap green. That's green gold. I do want that color, but not right this second. Um, I'm going to go in with sap green, which is a little bit more yellow and warmer than the hooker's green, and then the green gold is even warmer. Now one of the things I love about watercolor is how, um, you know, transparent it is and how much you can see. Um, all the other marks and layers through it um, from what you've already put down. So have some fun with that and experiment. Okay, then I'm going to take some of that green gold, which is a very warm color. And you probably don't need a ton of it, so go easy. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Whoops. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to dry this part right here with my heat embossing tool. Oops. Knocking things off the table. And yes, the paint that's already on here can be reactivated, but it's not as e it's easier said than done. And if you dry it first, you can control more where the next layer of paint goes, which is what I want. So 
So again, that's just the neutral tint. And then um, I'm going to go in, and I used purple, so I'm going to go in with, this is dioxazine purple. This is a Quar watercolor, Quar is by Golden. And I did use this color in the original painting that I did, that I lost the video on. And I'm, uh, purple, in my opinion, purple is a really great shadow color. And I used it in this painting, original painting, for that. Um, so I'm going to put a bit of it down. I'm not going to go too far before I come back with the water because I do want it to um, bleed and blend. At least I think I do. Um, this is a Quora watercolor, like I said, so it is very, very well pigmented. So a little bit of it really goes a long way. And because it's watercolor, you can't take it back. So use it sparingly. And if you want to switch up some of the colors in your painting from what is shown in the original photo, um, and the original photo colors are distracting you, then maybe think about printing the original photo in black and white. And that way you're really just looking at the tones and shades and you're not um, being distracted and overcome by the original colors and shades in the painting. So I love this brush because you really can get, you know, a fine, sharp line if you want by just barely touching it to the paper using that tip, or you can really lay it on thickly and get a um, wash by laying it down kind of flat, which is fabulous. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm liking it better than the other one. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put this up here. Again, you can get a copy of the original inspiration photo over on my Facebook page. I'm going to go back in with a little bit of neutral tint. And we are going to put a suggestion of a shadow of the building. And the bridge. Okay. Um, we're going to go in with some um, raw umber, which is a goldeny color. And we're going to use it to give our, start to try to give our painting some pop, um, some life. So we're going to use it to hopefully indicate some lightness and brightness. or at least to head us in the right direction anyway. Okay, I do also want to take our um, neutral tint. and use it to help with our shoreline.
stomach is very gurgly. I don't know if you can hear that on camera. Hopefully not. <laughs> now you're all going to listen for it though, right? <laughs> So I want to use, let's see, I think I'm going to use some of the purple. As a, and I didn't do this in the original one, but the purple is warmer, of course, than the neutral tint, which is very um, cool and blue gray. Um, the purple's more red, so it's more warm than that color. So I'm going to use it to be the highlight shadow color. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, I may go in, while it's wet, with some Purple Lake, which is a red. It's really like a maroon color. It's a really great color. The Purple Lake is a Winsor Newton. I'm going to mix it with the Dioxazine Purple, which is a Coir. And I'm going to warm that purple up even more. That's good. I like that. I'm going to take some of um, our blues and add them to our water. Okay, we're going to dry the whole thing. Okay, I have my Derwent colored pencils here, so let's go in with some of those. This is, what color is this? Deep Cadmium. So yellow, yellow, yellow. And these are not water soluble, they're just plain old color pencils. Well, not plain old, they're, they are Derwent, but you know what I mean. Let's go in with, not that one, <laughs> this is Delft Blue, so it's dark. The only thing about using something like this on top, or anything really on top of your painting is you want to make sure, make sure things are dry. So spend some time and dry them. And don't feel like you have to outline things. You want to, you know, add more color and more interest and more marks with your other tools and products. Okay, and then I'm going to add some, there's this one, Imperial Purple. Again with the purple. I know, I don't know where the, I have this fascination with purple right now.
And then I'm going to go in with a green. So this is grass green. I don't have my reading glasses on. <laughs> so, you know. Or I should say like my dad does. I don't have my eyeballs on. <laughs> so. Okay, so there you have it. Here is our painting for today. Um, done similarly in a similar fashion to the one done earlier on Watercolor Wednesday Live. I'm going to zoom out. Here is the original inspiration photo. And here you go. So that's it. I hope that you have some fun doing some quick, easy little landscapes. Have some fun with it. Switch up the colors. Be expressive. And I would love to see what you do. Join the Facebook group and you can tag me in your posts. And that's it for today. Don't forget the most important things. Support my channel, please, by shopping in the Etsy shop. The new 2017 stamp line is available for pre-order. You can also click on the fan funding button on the YouTube channel's main, uh, main homepage. You can um, do any one of those. You can also buy my book over at Amazon. Just go to the Amazon search box and put my name in. It will pop up. And like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> one more thing. Go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys.